Champions keep playing until they get it right. Billie Jean King, my friends, 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. That is all we ask. And when you learn to track these charts accurately, you will make up for all the time you ever thought about spending. And it is beautiful to behold when you understand how volume plays with the Heikinashi candlesticks, plays with the trend lines, so you can follow these trends. Imagine following the trend when it first started moving up back in October and flew up starting, we'll just go with the highest, worst place you could have gotten in that first week. That would have been 436.29. Even if you got in late the next week, at 440.93, what did we see happen? Well, of course, things went all the way up till we had that pullback to a high of 477.55. And that was simply from the end of October, beginning of November until January. And of course, remember how things ran up through Christmas. Then that, the market looked like it was going to tank. So it would have pulled out then, would have taken your profits. And then what happened? Market then turns back around and starts to shoot up from there. And again, just beautiful. Even if you would have waited until you had above average volume, that would have put you in in a worse spot at 496.05. And of course, where are we now? The high so far this week, four, uh, five, 515.89. Where are we? We are still along the market, up a percent for the day. On the two-day chart, we can see now this two-day candle finished drawing. There'll be a new one that starts tomorrow. But as we look at it, we can see we reached a higher high. Didn't have average volume, didn't get that high like the prior two candles did above average on both of those. We see things were up in the morning, further up in the afternoon. Another good week. We are still long the S&P 500. What about NASDAQ 100, the tech stocks. Well, we can see that it continues to plug along too. In fact, it was up one and a half times what the S&P was for the day, 1.52%. We look at where we were last week, the high 446.58. This week, 446.72, it finally pushed a little bit higher. So that is good to see. Again, two-day and the half-day are above that weekly trend line. We are still long the NASDAQ 100. Let's look at 20-year bonds. Okay, this is more confusing. We don't have any kind of volume that is helping us with the price move. Again, what do we like? We like the last time the, that we saw 20-year bonds go up. What did it do? It went down we had peak volume when we found our bottom, and then we had a green spinning top turnaround with higher than average volume, and things sprang up from there. Worst point you would have gotten in that week, starting Monday the 30th of October, was a high of 90 of 89.05, and of course, things continued to trundle up till they didn't with a high of $100.57. Now, as we see things, what has happened lately, we saw things move over again, didn't have peak volume there. Things slid over, tried to pop up, and we did have peak volume where things popped up on the 29th of January, the week beginning then, looking like things were going to potentially turn around. But look, it wasn't followed by an up move. It was followed by a down move, but no peak volume. And then it sort of meandered down for three weeks. And then what happened last week? A green spinning top. This week moving up some, down for the day, 0.09%. No definitive trail here. Yes, it may continue to move up. But again, don't have anything helping us find a bottom, find a good solid turnaround so you don't get faked out like what you saw here. Although even if you do, what is it we have to help you? That is, of course, our method of cutting your losses and running out your profits. And what is that? Well, we have great trainings on how we do it. And that is really the key, in addition to having some skill 
at charting the market. The second skill you've got to have, my friends, is understanding how to cut your losses and how to run your profits. How do you cut your losses? Well, we use the average true range on the two-day chart, and we use it when we jump into a trade to set our profit and loss band. We use this handy little tool right here. It's a forecasting and measurement tool. If you're going short, you're expecting something to move down, like you're jumping into an inverse fund, like say SH, which is the inverse of the S&P, and you're gonna track it on the S&P. I don't like necessarily using the underlying inverse, and I don't on the show just to keep it simple for you guys. And of course, you've got your long position if the thing is going up, the ETF or the stock. And then you simply put in the average true range for your profit ban on the upside and your loss ban on the downside. And then if it hits the loss ban, you jump out. If it hits the profit ban, you sell half your trade and then you let the rest of it run until it hits a predetermined number you've set or you see things pull back, the weekends with a red down candle and you get out. There's any number of ways you can decide that. But once you learn how to cut your losses and how to run your profits, that is another really great tool in your quiver for making you successful in your practice trades. And again, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to practice trade with us. Doesn't cost you anything but that 10 to 15 minutes we ask you to spend with us each and every day. So the bottom line is here on 20-year bonds, we don't know what it's doing. It's trying to move up. Uh, we can see how the candles are gaining some volume. Well, I'm sorry, not gaining volume, gaining, gaining length on the candlesticks as they move up on that two-day chart. But again, we see it blowing it off at the end of the day on the half-day chart. So We'll watch, we'll wait, we'll see. Can you go long on these when you just see the candle turn around? Sure you can. If you cut your losses and let your, let your profits run where well, you've got a chart that is most of the time highly accurate, you can, you can try that. I encourage you to try anything. I encourage you to, again, listen to what we have to teach you, learn everything else you can from everywhere else and particularly from your own experience practice to show yourself approved. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? I love that joke. Practice. Now, let's talk about gold. Gold again, up for the day, 0.57%. Look at gold on the half-day chart. When it turned around back on the 29th of February, now we saw, again, didn't get a lot of help from the volume until last week. We did see, didn't quite get to the average in the down move here on the 12th. Then things tried to turn around, but see, we'd already had that sort of happen before. And then things dropped back over. One thing we had going for this candle is it had no down wick on it. This one had a little down wick right here. Let me move to the side so you don't get confused with these dashes. But you can see on the 29th, there, there was some down move there showing some inherent weakness and it rolled back over. You do see here on this little green candle, there is no down wick, but again, no volume to speak of. Next week, it did pick up volume last week, and of course this week, just a hammering up, and we can see that reflected in both the two day and of course in the half day, as we can see over time how that has happened. So, gold long, moving in the right direction. Now, what about Bitcoin? Bitcoin up for the day on HODL, that is our Bitcoin ETF, the new VanEck ETF that took over from XBTF after they closed it. It was up 0.93% for the day, again a week with a high of $78.59. We can just see where Bitcoin spiking up. You can see it was up in the morning, about the same in the afternoon. We look at the 24 hour a day Bitcoin, you can see where things started moving up at 1 a.m on Thursday morning, and then just sort of continued throughout the day. Uh, and again, up 1.95%. That's the 24-hour day Bitcoin. Tom, why are we looking at this? You might be saying, well, we're looking at it because we have average volume here. We don't on the new chart for the new ETF. Won't get that until there's 20 weeks of movement because if you look at our volume indicator, you can see that our volume, if you look down here to the left side of the bottom screen, you'll see that our volume indicator is based on 20. That means 20 time periods. That's why we have one here 
on, oh, wait a minute. I'm looking at the wrong, but it's 20 on everything. The volume's 20, but you can see I only have one here on the half day. We don't have it on the two day yet. We'll be getting it pretty soon when we hit 20. And of course, we got to get to 20 weeks here on the ETF in order to get it on the weekly chart. But we are still long Bitcoin. Things are moving in the right direction. How high was the high this week? 69,000 from where? Well, after we had peak, you know, interim uh, volume on the downside, that was back on the 22nd of January. Then things turned around on Bitcoin. You saw all that average volume that just led you to believe things really were real and moving up, and it did so. And of course, Bitcoin went from the worst jumping in point there on the week beginning 29th of January. That would have been at 43,000, no, that's, well, yeah, that's the high, 43,853, all the way up to the high of 69,210. That's just unbelievable. For those of you that jumped in and rode that baby up on your practice trade, good for you. Now, the equivalent happened percentage-wise pretty much as we look at where things took off on HODL. Again, new starting chart, hard to follow it and get the kind of precise indicators and movement that we want to see because it doesn't have any breadth to it. It's so short-lived. Thank you so much for being with us, folks. Uh, Patreon members, we've already posted for you at the Patreon site. I did yesterday both the three-wave trades and the charting cryptos, commodities, and currencies. And of course, I will be sharing with you this evening the weekly vertical crossovers from the S&P 500. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.